Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You may be seated. Thanks. <clears throat> the, uh, the term pregame talk is familiar to most of you in this room. If you've ever played athletics, the pregame talk, this is the moment before the game starts. And this is when the coach gathers the team together. Uh, and gives them one final message before they hit the field or, or head out onto the court. Now, in the pregame talk, the coach's message is really a combination of last-minute instructions combined with one final charge, one final encouragement, a challenge. Today, we're going to begin a study of one of my favorite chapters in all of scripture, and it's Acts chapter 20. The last half of Acts chapter 20 records the Apostle Paul's famous speech given to the leaders of the church at Ephesus. Now, when you read this, some people over the years have called this a sermon. I got to tell you, it actually sounds more like a coach's pregame talk about to send them out onto the field than it does a sermon. So over the next four weeks, we are going to listen in on Paul's speech in a series that we're calling Game On, Game On. And it's all about getting into the game, uh, getting out onto the field and doing what God has called us to do. The goal of this series as we begin this new year is to really give us a, a clear reminder of God's purpose for our church, what he called us to do and a clear and concise understanding of God's purpose for our individual lives, okay? So, here's what I want us to do during the month of January. Let's think of our Sunday morning gatherings as a, a locker room talk, okay? We're about to hit the field, so this is a locker room talk, and uh, Coach Paul, a.k.a. the Apostle Paul, is going to prepare us for the game. Now, the game, of course, takes place not in this room, but out on the field. The field varies. For some of you, the field is the workplace, or your home, or your neighborhood, or your school. Your field and your court is wherever God sends you this week, where you come into contact with people in our community, all right? There's, the, there's where we're going with game on. Now, let's begin by reminding ourselves here at Grace, what is the mission of Grace? So on the screen, let's read it out loud together. Join me, please. The mission of Grace is to help people find and fulfill God's purpose for their lives. That's what we're all about. Now, today, we're gonna focus in on the first half of that mission, and that is helping people find God's purpose for their lives. And we're going to see that finding God's purpose for your life is all connected with finding a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. In fact, we have discovered, according to Scripture and according to our lives, a person really cannot find their purpose in life apart from a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We have to understand and remember that Jesus Christ made us, right? Uh, we are not simply the result of some accidental cosmic explosion. No, no. We are created by God. We are created for his purpose. So Jesus Christ knows us. He made us. He wired us. And so if we want to know what we are on planet Earth for, that can only be found when we get into a relationship with the one who made us. And that is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, Paul's speech begins with a compelling challenge for us to take the offense. Okay, we're going to take the offense. Now, I didn't say be offensive. That's different. We'll talk about that in a minute. No, no. When we go into our community, we are to take the 
offense, the offensive position. That is, we don't just sit here on Sunday morning and say, hey, Roswell, y'all come. We're open for business every Sunday. Y'all come. No, no. What we're going to learn today is the challenge is for us to go out. It's not just come and see, but it's actually go and tell. And so we're going to learn from Paul. What does it mean to go and tell? To take the, the offense, okay, to charge by taking the good news of Jesus Christ to people in our community, and you know who they are, who are living far from God. Anybody know somebody living far from God? Oh, man, yeah. If you don't, you're spending way too much time with Christians. <laughs> you need to know some people out there who aren't believers in Christ. So, Let's listen in carefully to Coach Paul as he explains what it takes to accomplish the goal of taking the offense. Okay, taking the offense. Game on. All right, are you ready? Here's challenge number one. Practice humble living. Practice humble living. Acts 20, verses 17 through 19, Paul begins his speech. Here's the setting. From Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus for the elders of the church, okay? When they arrived, he said to them, you know how I lived the whole time I was with you from the first day I came into the province of Asia. I served the Lord with what? Great humility. See those words? I serve the Lord with great humility and with tears and in the midst of severe testing by the plots of my Jewish opponents. Humble living. Coach Paul understood that people are not impressed with arrogance. This is why he decided to share the message of Christ how? With great humility. Paul said, man, from day one I made a decision. I'm not going to march in there with this arrogant know-it-all, I've got all the answers attitude. I'm going to approach you with great humility. A humble messenger, friend, will attract more people to the message than an arrogant messenger. So don't go out into the world and be an arrogant messenger. Lost people are actually turned off big time by arrogant Christians. They are very turned off. I heard the story about a church member who was, so, he was so humble that his church presented him with a lapel pin and it said, outstanding humble servant. A few weeks later, they had to take it away from him. He wore it everywhere he went. <laughs> Humility is a very difficult virtue to maintain. Maintaining humility, it's like holding that slippery watermelon seed. The minute you think you got it, okay, I'm working on humility, okay, man, I've got it, yeah, oh, hey, I am humble. It squirts loose. The minute you think you got it, it gets loose. Let's write this in our notes so we don't forget it. We will never impact our community for Christ, never, if we approach people with a know-it-all attitude. We cannot do that. We have to approach as fellow strugglers. We're all in this thing called life together. There's nobody perfect here at Grace but us sinners. A cocky attitude is in direct conflict with the message of humility taught and modeled by our Savior, Jesus Christ. When Jesus was on this earth, he was the most humble soul you would ever meet. Unassuming, not braggadocious, and he actually knew it all. But he never let on. Hey, 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 yeah, I'm the big guy. I know it all. No, all the way through the Gospels, you will hear the Gospels refer to Jesus as a humble spirit, a humble man. Boy, that is so important for us to remember. The old saying is true. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. If you're arrogant and cocky, they're going to think, well, they don't, he doesn't care about me. She doesn't really care about my life. She's all into herself. He's all into himself. 
So let's remember to be very, very humble. Now, the next fill in the blank is very important, but we got to fix a word. I made a typo. So you got to change a word here, all right, on evangel. This is my favorite definition of evangelism. Evangelism is one beggar telling another beggar where, not when, where he found bread. Isn't that a great definition? We don't march out of here going, I've got all the answers. Look at me. My life is perfect. No, we walk out of here as beggars telling another beggar, hey, man, I found bread. I found the meaning of life. I found how to get rid of my guilt, how to have a purpose for living, a home in heaven. See, we just go out, we're just sharing what Christ has done in our lives. The spotlight is not on us, it's on what he has done. When we take the good news of Jesus Christ to our community, first of all, guys, we got to remember to practice what kind of living? Humble. Humble living. Challenge number two, practice helpful teaching. Practice helpful teaching. Watch where Paul takes us now in verses 20 and 21. Still pregame talk, okay? He says, you know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be what? Helpful. Isn't that amazing? Paul wanted to be helpful. He said, man, I haven't hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house. I have declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance, remember that word, repentance, and have faith in our Lord Jesus. Wow, that was simple. Pretty basic, wasn't it? Coach Paul did not hesitate to share the gospel of Christ. Why? Because he was fully convinced his message could help people. Genuinely help people live life. Paul knew the message of Christ was practical, it was relevant, it was uh, applicable to your daily life. He understood the message of Christ actually had the power to change a person's life forever. That's why he meets a man. I don't hesitate. I'm not bashful about sharing the gospel because it changed my life and I know it can impact the lives of other people. Now, do you realize that one of the primary criticisms the world has toward the church is that our message is irrelevant? We get that all the time. The church, you're out of date. You're out of touch. Your message isn't relevant anymore. Nothing is further from the truth. Our message is extremely relevant and life-changing. However, we've got to make sure that we are applying God's truth, okay? We apply God's truth in a very relevant way, in a contemporary way, in a practical way to people's lives. All right, now let's just be honest with this next fill in the blank. And we have to be honest. Are we making this mistake? In your notes, are we answering questions nobody is asking? Now that's a bit scary. If we're answering all these questions and the world goes, man, that has nothing to do with my life. That's not where I'm living. Then, then we're, just, we're just wasting air and taking up space. We've got to make sure that we are relevantly answering the people in our world, answering their questions, meeting their needs, giving the solutions to the problems they are facing in our culture. Nehemiah 8.8 8 is it's a life verse for me. And it's just a great reminder of how we are to take the word of God and help it apply to people's lives. Nehemiah 8.8, 8, look at this. This is speaking of the teachers in the Old Testament. And it said, they, the teachers, read from the book of the law, that is the Old Testament scriptures. Look at this. Making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people understood what was being read. Isn't that great? Guys, 
That's what each of us, we're called to do. We're to take the truth of Scripture and with the people that we work with our, in our neighborhoods, at school, any of our relationships with people who don't know Christ, what is our goal? It's just to make it clear so they can understand and apply it to their lives. The greatest compliment I get on Sunday morning is when a, an unchurched first-time guest walks up to me at the front and just says, Pastor, you know, I don't go to church, but I've got to tell you, what you talked about, that made sense. That makes my day. I love it when somebody says, hey, I understood. You know, for the first time, I didn't think I could read the Bible, but we kind of read that passage and I followed it and I read it on the screen and it made sense. I, I could see how that applied to my life. That makes my day. See, we've got to be really careful that we don't use Christianese in our world, that we don't go around going. See, you don't walk up to an unchurched people and say, oh, man, praise God, I have been justified, glorified, and sanctified. Hallelujah. <laughs> They're going to go, you got what um, Let's get the cookies on the lower shelf, okay? Let's get those cookies so everybody can partake. Making it clear making it plain. People need to understand how the truth of God's word can do things like this, how, how the truth of God's word can remove guilt, how it can improve relationships, how the word of God can relieve stress and anxiety in a person's life, how it can help us make wise decisions, how it can give us hope. That's what people in our world need to hear. Do you realize that most people are shocked, absolutely shocked, when they discover the Bible addresses everyday topics? You realize that? People are blown away. They go, whoa, I didn't know the Bible talked about marriage and how to have a better marriage. I had no idea the Bible addressed parenting or how to manage your finances or how to make wise decisions Man, I did, I did, and, and how to deal with conflict resolution in the workplace. I didn't know the Bible talked about all that. Yeah, it does. So our goal is to take the Word of God, make it clear, understandable, applicable, relevant, on the lower shelf so everybody can understand. Does that make sense? Coach Paul knows that the truth of Christianity can actually change a person's life. Romans 12, 2. Here's what Paul believed, Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. This word means metamorphosis, uh, changed. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then what? Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Do you see what Paul is saying? In fact, he uses that word repentance. What's he talking about there? He's talking about a change of mind, that we make that change. In your notes, people who feel stuck need to see how Christ can bring about genuine change in their lives. I got to tell you, I'm te people around you, they feel stuck. They feel stuck in their guilt. They feel stuck in their addiction, in their bad marriage in their horrible job, in their, in their attitude toward it, people around you every day feel stuck. Guess what? You have the opportunity of sharing a message that can change their life. That, did you know the word repentance? What it means is a, literally it means a change in your mind that leads to a change in direction. See, you were following the pattern of this world. How's that working out for you? Oh, man, I make a lot of stupid decisions. I pay a lot of stupid tax. All right, guess what? What you need to do is you need to repent. That mean, You need to change your mind, which will lead to a new way of living your life. That's what we're... See, repentance isn't some guy with an oversized Bible with big hair like this saying, Repent! Repent. No, repentance just means 
you know what? I was stupid, and I kind of figured out a better way to live. And I'm going to go this way. That, and guys, God wants to use you to help people discover that truth. Not in an arrogant, know-it-all way, in a very humble way. It's like, hey, you paid stupid tax. Let me tell you about stupid tax. I wrote the book on stupid tax. But now I've learned a better way to live. We have the opportunity of helping people discover that. So this week, guys, when we go into our community with the good news of Jesus Christ, what do we need to do? Let's practice helpful teaching. All right, here's the third challenge. Practice holy loving. Holy loving. That's not a misprint, not a misspelling. Some of you started to write living, didn't you? Caught you. No, no, no. Loving. Practice holy loving. Verses 22 to 24. Paul says this. And now, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. What is that, Paul? The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Now notice, first of all, Paul is compelled and guided by the Holy Spirit. This means that Paul is now on a holy mission. Do you know what the word holy means? It means set apart for God's purpose. It means you were living your life for yourself. God arrested you. You repented. Now you are on a holy mission for God. According to Coach Paul's challenge, absolutely nothing is to deter or distract from our holy mission. Nothing. So every day we have to wake up and take the offense and say, lost people matter to God, therefore lost people matter to me. God loves lost people who are far from him, therefore I'm going to love lost people who are far from God today. And I'm going to do everything in my power to humbly Share the good news of Jesus Christ that can change a person's life forever. That is our driving passion. That is our purpose. And we know that lost people cannot find their purpose in life without a relationship with Christ. So, so our ultimate goal is just, get, just to introduce people to Jesus. Hey, I got this great friend I want you to meet. And you, your job is to get them connected to Jesus Christ. Now, what does this mean for you and me? In your notes, I mean, this, God, this is our calling. We are now set apart by God to practice holy loving. So this week, God is going to call you to love people. In your family, in your neighborhood, at your school, at work, wherever you find people, you are now commissioned by God, set apart to love those people by sharing the gospel with them. What compels and propels your life? What's the driving force? What gets you out of bed at night? What drives you through the day? You ask Paul that question, man, it's like that. He said, I'll tell you what drives me. The task of proclaiming and testifying the gospel of Jesus Christ. God's grace changed my life, Paul says. And I've just got to get the word out to other people. 2 Corinthians 5.14. This is Paul again. What does he say? For the love of Christ compels us. Does the love of Christ compel you? Uh, Christ's love for you, Christ's love for other people. That should be the engine that drives us every day. The fact that people are lost. I mean, guys, lost for eternity without Christ. That should deeply motivate us and greatly and passionately concern us. So this week, we take the good news of Jesus Christ to our community. And when we do it, we're going to remember all week long, we're going to look for opportunities where God opens the door, where we can love people with the love of Christ. 
I guarantee you, if you wake up in the morning and say, God, can you use an old guy like me just to love somebody today? And I'm going to have my antennas up. I'm going to be looking and listening for doors of opportunity. I promise you, God will use you in a powerful way to testify to the gospel of grace. Now, this is, remember, this is Coach Paul's pregame message to the offense. And last time I checked, offense is all about scoring, right? If you're on offense, your goal is to score. Our challenge on offense is to win people for Jesus Christ. That's our challenge. Let me put it this way. From this point on at Grace Community Church, guys, it is simple math. It is simple math. Whenever we win a person for Jesus Christ, hell loses one, heaven wins one. It's, I like simple math. I never was good at math. It's simple math. Hell loses one, they accept Christ, heaven wins one. So our goal and our purpose is to do math. Addition, not subtraction. Addition for the kingdom of God. We love to resource you guys here at Grace. You know that. So I'm going to just mention some practical resources that I use, and I would recommend it to you. Uh, first, we have all these are available in the lobby. This is a little card called Connect To. On the back are blanks where you write the names of people you're praying for who don't know Christ. Anybody here know somebody living far from God? What you do, you take the card, you write their name on it, and then you put this card somewhere where you're going to see it, and you're going to be praying, God, give me an opportunity to do some holy loving, some, you know, some helpful teaching with this person. Great little resource. Another resource that I use weekly are these little invite cards. Um, this card, these again, available in the lobby. Just grab a stack of them. This card is a generic card inviting people to grace, gives the location, time, all the details. Uh, this one called uh, Something Different is specifically designed for Grace Sunday night. Uh, so if you see people, you think, yeah, I think they would fit Grace Sunday night, you give them this. Like this week, I gave one person this card. I ran into another guy at a restaurant who was 20-something and so I gave him this card. I thought, yeah, you would really enjoy Grace Sunday night. Talk to him a little bit about it. Just simple resources that you can give. And then two that I have used for years, uh, the New Believers Growth Book. You talk about getting it on the lower shelf. A child can understand the presentation of the gospel in this one. And Rick Warren's What on Earth Am I Here For? Do you know what this is? This is chapter one of The Purpose Driven Life. They just... they packaged it in a very simple way where you can give these out. So just great resources to have in your purse, in your pocket, in your car, wherever you run into people, okay? That's where you need to keep these. Let me, uh, let me tell you one more thing, and then we'll head out. Um, I would like to describe what will happen on the day you die. Aren't you, glad, aren't you glad you came to church? <laughs> I mean, seriously, I'm, I, if, I, if I'm still your pastor, here's what will happen, seriously, on the day you die. I'll be in my office, and I will get a call either from the hospital or one of the funeral homes informing me that you have died, okay? I will then call your family members, and I'll try to get with them pretty soon, uh, go over wherever they are, and I'll try to console them, and I'll pray with them. And then we will begin to plan your funeral service. On the day of your memorial service, we uh, will sing a song or two. We'll have a friend or maybe a family member give a brief eulogy about your life, maybe even a, a little short video of some family photos. I will then have a pastoral message and a closing prayer. We will then have a family meal, 
consisting of either brisket or ham, potato salad, beans, and a selection of desserts. Now, here's what I want you to understand. At that moment, only two things matter. Only two. Number one, are you in heaven? And number two, who else will be there because of you? Only two things. Now can we understand why Coach Paul is very serious about us taking the offense, helping people find their God-given purpose found in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Ultimately, nothing else matters. Someday, guys, look around. It all burns up. Someday it all burns up. The only thing left is what is of eternal value. This is why it is not optional. We must take the offense. We must practice humble living and helpful teaching and a whole lot of holy loving. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Let's bow. Father, thank you for Coach Paul's encouraging and challenging words. This week, Lord, we will each have an opportunity to take the offense in a very humble, a generous, loving way. So I pray that when you open those doors of opportunity, you will remind us of how much you have freely given us. May we then, Lord, by your grace, pay it forward sharing the good news of Jesus Christ that changed us and that can literally change the world. This is our prayer through our Savior's name, Jesus Christ. Amen.